Shalom saints, shalom and good day. How are you all doing? Shalom saints, shalom, shalom, shalom. I'm waiting for all of you to log in and I pray that you are all doing well. Sister Beth, shalom my beloved sister. Sister Tasha, shalom. Shalom Sister Jolene. Shalom Atimu Yakuhula. How are you, Sister Beth? Golden Lattes. Shalom, Sister. Shalom, Sister Portia. Sosa, Shalom. Shalom, Brother Kieran. Shalom, 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 Orchid Vega. Shalom, Sister. Sister Mimi, Shalom. Brother Jaha. Shalom, Sister Nicole. Shalom. God bless you more, Sister. God bless you more. Sister Titi Toure, Shalom. Sister Nicole, Shalom. Beloved Sister Ashley, Shalom, Saints. Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, Shalom. Brother Nigel, Shalom. Shalom, Sister Irene. Shalom, Shalom, Sister Leslie. Shalom, Sister Antoinette. How are you, Beloved Sister? Shalom, saints. Shalom as you all join in. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. I hope you are all doing well, saints. I hope all is well with you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father reading something here while i wait for all of you to log in saints um to write down something okay shalom saints i think we are all here by the special grace of god shalom I'm waiting for Sister Lori. I don't know if she's still, she's in or not. But if you are in Sister Lori, shout. <laughs> shalom, saints. Um, I want to, shalom, Sister Rose. Shalom. Shalom, Brother Ricardo. Shalom, Sister Brandon. Thank you for the gift. Um saints i want to apologize for those who those of you who wrote me yesterday a message i have not replied saints i'm a bit under the weather um i think i have all those common flu symptoms like fever headache and all that so saints please bear with me i will reply okay i haven't been myself since yesterday and I'm just trying to, you know, to keep going. So I will reply, saints. It's not... Shalom, Sister Lori. So, saints, don't be offended. Some of you wrote... Uh, uh, sister wrote me a message very important concerning her son. I will reply, reply. But I've been feeling fluish since yesterday. When I left the live stream, I began to develop this fever and everything. I'm fine, though. And so, yeah, it's the weather because we're now going through all that changing. It was so hot and now all of a sudden it's so cold. But saints, bear with me, okay? I will reply. Um, the title for this live stream today, saints, is Oh Lord, give me divine revelation. Thank you, Lula, for the advice. God bless you. I will do it. And Casa Films, I will do it. I will try my best. Because I hate taking medication. I don't like it. I will take any tea or anything, but I don't like the medication. So, saints, today the title for this live stream is, Oh, Lord, my God, give me divine revelation. I'm here to say, saints, that we pray, we fast, and we seek the face of Almighty God. But... There is something that is very important to all of us believers in Christ. We cannot operate efficiently. We cannot be efficient in our prayers. Our prayers will miss the target if we don't get from God divine revelation. And I'm going to give an example here. A sister contacted me and says that she has been praying and fasting. Nothing has happened until God 
gave her a prophecy here that God was going to reveal who is behind her problems. And long behold, God revealed to her that the witch behind her problems is her mother that is doing witchcraft against her and is a practice, practitioner of ancestry worship. And she is the one behind her troubles. You see now? Now she, she can pray with revelation of who is the, afflict, af, af, the person afflicting her. What, who is the source of her problems? You see that? So we need divine revelation from God. Some of you think, oh, but you know, I'm not a prophet. We all prophets. Be the prophet of your own destiny. Be the prophet of your own house. Ask for God to give you divine revelation. God will give you. Say, Lord, I've been praying and fasting. I've been giving, sowing my seed. I've been doing everything, but I'm still in this situation. Who is behind this reproach? What is behind this affliction? Who is sending these arrows? Because I cannot pray and fight an enemy that I don't know who the enemy is, that I don't have knowledge. I want you to reveal to me, Lord. This is the title for the live stream today, saints. We have prayed, we have fasted, and we are fasting every day. We are constantly in the presence of God. We are sowing our seeds. We are diligent. Midnight prayers, we don't miss them. Early in the morning, we get up and we pray. But can you imagine a person fighting an invisible enemy? I used to remember those films when I was a child, sci-fi films where the enemy will just become invisible. And then the, the, the hero will be there with a gun, but not knowing where the enemy was. And the enemy will just begin to show shadows. And then when the, 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 the hero will turn around and, and then the enemy he's, he, he, he makes himself invisible. Or they will wear a suit that will make them invisible. You are not going to be able to fight an invisible enemy. You need God to show you and give you divine revelation. Yes, swinging at the air with no heat. Exactly, Sister Lord. So I'm here to say, saints, if there are astral projecting to your home, Sister Leslie, ask God to show you that you can see them astral projecting. You can see them as they are. A sister, I could read a message from a sister that sent me this morning. I'm going to reply to her, though. She said that her son got rev divine revelation of the witch astral projecting to his home and is a family member. All right. So when you have divine revelation, you can pray and send the fire of the Holy Ghost to, to locate them at their address. You can even say, which so-and-so that lives at this address and works at this place, Holy Ghost, fire, locate them. Don't miss them today, locate them. You tell them, you, you know their name and surname. Then you will be efficient. But if you don't know what is the source of your problems, your enemies can kill you, you know. An enemy that you don't know there is an enemy will come to your house with cake, with cookies, with food, and you will eat and die. Come on now, saints, it's happening. I've seen it. So this is not a joke. If you, for instance, that sister that contacted me to say that God revealed to her there is a mother. Now that if the mother brings in food for us, she's not going to eat it. If the mother brings in something or a clothing or whatever to give to her, she knows what to do. Now, saints, don't be like those Christians that go and confront the witch. Now, saints, our confrontation is in prayer. All right, that is where all the confrontation ha happens. I have a story that I'm going to tell you, saints, because today I have time. Teacher strikes. My children are home, right? So I have time. I have a story to tell you of something that was confided in me. This happened. This is not something fiction. All right. A friend of mine that is a believer, born again in Christ, said that his mother constantly uh, kept hearing the, the, the bell. And every time she goes, she looks, no one is there. And then she, she then began to be, think, but this is spiritual. This is not something, you know, physical. Anyway, 
The lady went to sleep. Bear in mind, this is my friend's mother, right? She went to sleep and she had a dream that the neighbor was the one fully naked pressing the buzzer and wanted to gain entry to her home. If you dream with somebody fully naked, that is, means that God has just exposed a witch. Be very careful if you dream with somebody naked. You are dealing with a high-ranking witch. And that lady foolishly, because although her son was born again, she was not born again. But God still loved, loved her and showed who is the person that is doing this. I believe because of her son's prayers. So the woman left her house and gone and con confronted the man. Went and knocked on the door. It was a neighbor. So stop coming to my house to astral project naked, blah, blah, blah. I'm not your candidate. That foolishness can never happen in my house. This, this, the lady was very upset because she had three consecutive dreams with him. And to her shock, he said, eh, hmm, Mrs. So-and-so, you are so clever. You are so, yay, hmm, you are dangerous. You, you've exposed me. Just like that. But saints, we are not going to do what this lady has done. In fact, I know this lady. Glory be to God. She is now in Christ. She is a born again Christian. She is strong in the Lord. She is now in Christ Jesus. Through her son, she came to the light of the gospel. But this is an example, saints, that we cannot approach these witches and warlocks and confront them and all these things. You cannot do that. If you know that God has revealed to you, God reveals it to you for you to take it, take the warfare to the spiritual realm. That is your assignment. Because I'm reminding you all of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10 or onwards. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. This, you, you cannot confront these people. In, in the physical. Number one, you don't have the jurisdiction to do so. Because God does, has already told you that take it to the spiritual realm. God is, 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 is a spiritual being. He deals with such matters in the spiritual. And then you will see the effects of the victory in the physical. But you, you are not to wrestle in the physical. Some of you, you had a dream. You've gone to confront your mother-in-law, confront your father-in-law, confront brothers and sisters. And now they are beginning to say that you have gone cuckoo. You are mad. You are a lunatic. You should be in a mental asylum. This is it. Some of you will end up, are, you know, sectioned because they're going to believe that you've gone mad. Yes, they're going to believe, well, well, this person should be really in a mental institution. They're not sane. You see what I'm saying? How the devil can flip the script and all of a sudden you are sectioned and you are in some sort of mental institution on medication and being injected because you are saying things that you have a sword, you have fire, you have the... Listen, you cannot be saying those things to people. They will truly, you know, contact the authority saying this person, not only it seems that they are a, a danger to themselves, but the things that they are saying are not right. I remember some years ago when I was in church, the, the pastor said, look, she called a brother to give him a stern warning. Because this brother would see other brother on the other side of the road uh, about to take the bus. And then he will shout, brother so-and-so. Oh, if it's a sister, sister so-and-so, where is your sharp sword of the spirit? And the people will back off at the bus stop thinking, what, what kind of... And this was when, after 9-11. So can you imagine that? So people would just be very, genuinely very scared. But he was talking about the word of God. And he would shout from, where is your sword? I can see you have no sword, brother. Where is your sword? We, we're going to slay some enemies today. Only, you know, this brother was called to stop this foolishness. So you are not to do, to, to, to do confront them. Confront them in the spirit. There is a place for you to confront them and, in, and it's in your prayer closet. All right? So don't go about saying that you're going to call the spirit of the living God and the fire of God. You're going to arrest them in this. They're going to begin to think, hey, this person, he, 
is a mental case. Is fit for them for the for the horse for the mental units. Be very careful. Don't say, Sister Dalila did not warn you because the devil is always waiting for an opportunity. And how can you minister to anyone behaving like that? They're gonna think you've gone mad. I used to have a, an auntie of mine, she used to do her groceries, and all of a sudden, when they speak to her address, she will begin to speak in tongues in public. So they began to think that she had gone mentally ill and my mom had to go and speak to her because she was just a baby in Christ. Says, Sister, you cannot go around speaking in tongues. People are going to think you've gone mad. You do this in your, in, when you're in church in, in a proper space. You don't, and she will just begin to shout and jump in the middle of the supermarket in tongues and glory. Be, people be, be, begin began to say that she's gone mad. So... This is just something that I need to tell you when God reveals things to you. Why the warning? Because I've seen happening saints. I've seen somebody to go into another person's home to accuse them. Now the police has been called. Now that saint has been arrested. And all that. I've seen these things happen. So when God reveals it to you, because it's painful, some of you, God is going to reveal your mother or your father or your sibling or even your spouse. So the safest thing to do is that you contact a sister in Christ or a brother in Christ. If you want to contact Sister Dalila on message, say, Sister Dalila, God has revealed it to me that is so and so. And I'm in state of shock. Help me in prayer. And I will pray and I will get the intercessors as well to pray with you. But don't confront them. All right. When God was revealing it to you, he did not reveal it to you for you to take the matter into your own hands. God reveal it to you so that you can take action in prayer. All right, saints? Glory be to God. So, saints, please do get your Bibles ready. Get your Bibles ready, saints. Get everything ready. You need also a pen and a paper because these scriptures that I'm going to give it to you today, as I always do, are very important. If you have a, a diary that you are following the ministrations, you can put the title and then you put the scripture so that when you go to pray and you ask asking God to reveal all things to you, you bring these scriptures to God. All right. So get everything ready, saints, to remind you all that we are fasting up to the 31st of this month of October. Our fasting will end with Holy Communion on the 31st of October. Okay. Please do get your matzo bread ready and also your grape juice. I don't want any excuses or people saying, oh, I didn't have time to prepare myself. You have, you've, you've had many warnings, you've many reminders, all right? And I will be reminding you every day so that I don't get anyone saying to me, oh, I don't have no matzo bread. I don't have no grape juice. No, there will be no excuses. You are fully, fully warned. All right? Fridays as well, saints, if you have any, um, you haven't got any anointing oil or holy water, bring your olive oil and your water on Friday for consecration. And anything else that you want to consecrate to God, including your marriage, you want to bring your, your, your wedding rings, bring. You want to bring your house keys because your rent is due and you want to pay for your rent. You want to consecrate your certificates, your education to God so that God can prosper you. Whatever it is that you want to dedicate to God, bring it on Friday. We are going to be consecrating all these things unto God. All right, saints? I think that is all. And also be very careful with scammers and fraudul fraudulent people. Here on TikTok, impersonating me, asking you for money, asking you for all sorts of things. It's, it's not Sister Dalila. I only have this page, saints. And uh, everything that happens in this ministry happens here. And it follows that you get claiming to be me, block and report. All right, saints. Let us all consecrate this live stream unto the Lord. Be from now on in the spirit of prayer, okay? Be honest with God. Have a sincere heart before Him. All right? Prepare yourself. Be in a position that you really want divine revelation from God. What we are going to do, we're going to pray. And after the ministration, 
for God to take you and use you in the prophetic. Because whenever you have divine revelation, either in dreams or in visions or through the word or you hear something, you have stepped into the prophetic. And that's, that is what we are going to do today. We are going to ask God to step into the prophetic realm so that the Lord will reveal the hidden secrets of our lives, the deeper things, our enemies, our hidden enemies, who is fighting us and fighting our glory, fighting our prosperity, even fighting our health and our marriage and whatever it is. Let divine revelation begin to happen in your life by surrendering your life to Christ and by receiving it, saints, because some people cannot receive because they do not ask. And some people do ask, but do not receive because they lack faith. So believe that God is here and he will speak to you. Okay? He will begin to reveal it to you. Hallelujah. Father Lord, I thank you for your presence this afternoon, Lord God. I thank you, Father Lord, because many of us here under the weather with the flu, but we are still here at your feet, Lord God. You have given us the strength to be here. Some saints are going through difficult times, tough times, times of testing, times of tribulation, times, Father Lord, where they are pressed in every ways, but they are still here, Lord God, obedient to you. They are still here because they want to have a divine encounter with you. And we know, Lord, that we cannot live without your presence. We cannot do anything without your presence, without your love. Father Lord, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Father Lord, for supplying for all our needs, for taking care of us. Thank you, Father Lord, for allowing us to see another day, for giving us another chance to see the light of day, Lord God. Father Lord, thank you for our family members. Thank you for the food on our tables. Thank you for the roof of our heads, Lord God, for, for the clothes on our backs. Thank you, Father Lord, for health. Thank you, Father Lord, for family. Thank you, Father Lord, for those who, of us who still have at least one parent alive that show us love and, 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 and pray for us. Lord, we thank you for all of them, Lord God. Thank you for your deliverance, Lord God, for your divine protection. We know that the devil and his agents are very busy conspiring, sending arrows, enchantments, divinations against us. But Lord, you have not allowed the weapons, the enterprise to prosper against us. You have been protecting us. You have been shielding us. You have been, Father Lord, empowering our guardian angels to protect us and deliver us from all evil. And Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercies, Lord God, that are renewed, made new every morning. We thank you, Father Lord, because there is still breath in us to praise you, to worship you, to adore you and to rever you, Lord God. Father Lord, as we surrender our hearts, our souls and our spirits and our, and our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, Lord Oh God, we ask you once again for total forgiveness of all our sins and transgressions and iniquities. Oh, Father Lord, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that the Lord Jesus was bruised and crushed for our infirmities. He was, Father Lord, killed for our trespasses, Lord God, that he sacrificed himself to bring us peace, Lord God. So we thank you for the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross of Calvary for the remission of our sins. And we bring our ourselves before your throne to be fully washed and drenched and sanctified and purified in the precious blood of your son Jesus, that the, the blood of Jesus has never lost his power. He still speaks of our atonement. He still speaks of the ministration of reconciliation. Oh, Lord God, reconciliation with you, Lord God, after the sin of Adam and Eve. Father Lord, thank you for your presence here. Thank you, Father Lord, for all the things you did in the past for us. Oh, Father Lord, for all the things that you are doing, even for the things that you are about to do lord we thank you and we worship you father lord i'm asking you that you begin to bind principalities rulers of darkness that are father lord seeking to steal kill and destroy that are seeking to cause division in our missed problems with the internet that's seeking to sabotage this live stream and cause retaliation so that we will give up 
on our prayers so that we will give up on our seeking for your presence and mercy. Father, Lord, bind these principalities, bind these rulers of darkness with everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire. Cast them all onto the bottomless pit of the abyss forever and ever. Never to have any power, control, dominion, authority against us, Lord God, against the live stream, against the ministration, against the word that is about to be released here. Father Lord, every person or personalities, either Father Lord, they are present physically on the live stream or astral projecting to this live stream in order to sabotage, send arrows, pass Paralyze the work of the cross here on this live stream. Father Lord, I'm asking you, bind them also with the everlasting chains of the Holy Ghost fire. Render them powerless. Holy Ghost fire, consume them. Holy Ghost fire, consume them. Holy Ghost fire, consume them. Oh, when you victim of this live stream forever in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, I'm asking you also that you will speak through me, Lord God, so that the word that will be released here today will bring divine revelation will make your servant step into the prophetic so that in the prophetic realm they will get divine revelation of the source of their affliction of the source of the, the trouble the tribulation and the source of the arrows Lord God Father Lord we thank you for all that you did all that you are doing and about to do on this live stream, Almighty God, deliver us from every retaliation from the kingdom of darkness. Lord Jesus, I envelope each one of your servants, including myself and my family members and all our family members with the pre with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Envelope all of them. Oh, Father Lord, envelope all of us in your precious blood. Father Lord, I place this live stream in a pool of your precious blood. Father Lord, hide this live stream and all of us here under your shadow. Make us invisible to the kingdom of darkness so that there will be liberty for the Holy Spirit to summer from the four corners of the world. All those who are wanted today to receive the call of salvation. All those who you want to locate, Father Lord, to manifest yourself to them, to show yourself to them, Father Lord. I thank you for all that you did, Lord God, all that you were doing and about to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Before I go into ministration, God is revealing to me that there is a lady here with a foul discharge. You have a foul discharge. You were here on this live stream, but you have a foul discharge as a woman receive your healing in the mighty name of jesus write capital me very quickly so that i can begin to preach god has already healed you even before you step into this ministration even before you sat down already the holy spirit was healing you already the power of god was healing you just write you receive it beloved in jesus name glory be to god receive it glory be to god hallelujah <clears throat> saints i trust you all have your bibles okay and um, follow me to the book of Psalms 31, 3. Psalm 31, 3. Psalm 31, 3. And it reads, Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. All of us saints that are trusting in God, relying on God, expecting the mercy of God at the feet of Jesus. We are to ask him to lead us and guide us. Without God's leadership, without God's guidance, you cannot accomplish anything in the land of the living as a believer. You cannot do anything. You are paralyzed without God's leadership. If God does not lead you and guide you, what can you do? If God is not in your life to show you the direction in which you should go, to show you how you should pray, when you should pray, what time, what hour exactly, because only God knows the hour that they are sending the arrows. Only God knows the time that they are sending the affliction. Only God knows that. So I'm here to say, saints, you are to ask God to lead you. You are to ask God to show himself strong. You are to ask God to protect you. You are to ask God to lead you, to guide you. It is written in the word of God. What can you do if God is not your leader? What can you do if God is not showing you what path you are lost and there is nothing you can do? 
So when you go into your prayer closet, you begin to say, Lord, I'm here to be led by you. Lord, I'm here to be guided by you. I need your guidance. I need your leadership. I need you to tell me what to do. I don't know what to do, Lord. I'm in this condition. I'm in this situation. What do I know? I know nothing unless you reveal it to me. I know nothing unless you begin to bring me into a space of divine revelation. Glory be to God. Let us go again, saints of Almighty God, to Deuteronomy 29, 29. Deuteronomy 29, 29, and it reads, The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may follow all the words of this law. Come on now, saints. God is saying here in this scripture, in fact, this is when you see anything in the Old Testament, especially the five books of Moses. Moses is the one who received this revelation. He's saying that the secret things belong to the Lord. What is the secret thing in your life? What is the secret? What is the secret? What is the mystery of your hardship? What is the mystery of your inability to go forward? What is the mystery behind your infirmity? What is the mystery behind the problems in your marriage? What is the mystery behind the problems you are now facing at what, what is the mystery? Ask God because all secret things belong to him. He knows that he's the fountain of all knowledge. He knows everything. Come on now. And if he knows all things, you are to ask him to reveal it to you. Say, Lord, bring me divine revelation. So that, Father Lord, I will know what to do, Lord God. I will know what to pray. So the Bible says that we may follow all the words of this law. You follow the law and you pray with the law, which is the word of God. When we are pronouncing judgments against witches, wizards, and warlocks, when we are bringing situation to the high court of God, don't we not bring the word? Don't we not bring the law of God? So how, what, how are you going to know what law to bring before the, God, before the God of your forefathers? If you don't know what is the source of your affliction, you won't know what word to pray. Come on now, saints. Some of you praying for your marriage. It's been three, four months fasting because you are having problems. You need divine revelation because perhaps your, your partner has already left that marriage long ago and you are the only one that is still in that marriage. You need a revelation from God so that you will know in what direction to pray. You will know where to target your, your, your weapons. Suppose you are praying for a job and it has been 15, 20 years. You're fasting, you're praying, you're sowing seed. But I'm here to say every seed that you have sown into God's vineyard, you will reap your harvest. And today is the day of your harvest. God is going to reveal it to you. Why are you unemployed? Why are you in that situation? Because you've been sowing in prayers. You've been sowing crying. You've been sowing in, 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 in supplication, in fasting. And when I'm saying sowing, it's not money. I'm saying sowing in prayers. Praying, you are sowing a seed as well. So seed is not only money. Okay? Some people sow evil. Some people sow discord. Some people sow slander. But you are sowing prayer. You are sowing praise and worship. You are sowing um, fasting. And on top of it, you are sowing money as well as a seed. For the furtherance of the gospel. Won't God answer you? This ministration itself is an answer. It's a testament that everything that a man sow, he will surely reap. Today you will reap your harvest. And the harvest today has come in the form of divine revelation. Come on now. The Bible says, Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But the things revealed belong to us and to our children forever. You need divine revelation. Who is the person that is sending witchcraft arrows to your home? That you are now at night, you cannot sleep. And when you sleep, you are having nightmares. Who is sending witchcraft arrows of infirmity? If it's not you that is sick, it's your husband. If it's not your husband, it's your children. And that is affecting your income. Who, who is sending arrow of poverty to your address? Who is the person responsible for your sorrow, your pain at work? That you go to work and everybody just gangs up against you. Who is the person responsible for your poverty? Who is the person responsible for your inability to conceive, your inability to get married, your inability even to provide for your children. Who is responsible? What is the source? What is the genesis of your problem? 
If God does not reveal it to you, you will remain in darkness. That's why they call it the your cult. What is the your cult? They, whatever they do, they rely on darkness. They don't like the light. They don't want people to know what they're doing. So that's why whatever they're doing, they're doing it at night. Whatever they're doing, they do it in heathen. Whatever they're doing, they make sure it's well concealed because they don't want you to know because whatever it is that touches the light is exposed. And once it's exposed, guess what? Is immediately arrested because people will see, oh, so is you then. You see? Even thieves, they like to operate at night. Number one, the CCTV cameras at night, they cannot capture much. Number one, at night, the cities go to sleep. People are sleeping. People are, are not watching. Okay? And Satan is the same saints. Is it not Satan the god of the thieves? Satan likes to operate in darkness. He likes to steal at night. That's why he comes to your dreams to steal. You see that in your dream, somebody has taken your wallet. Somebody is taking your children. In the dream, you are begging. In the dream, you are collecting coins from the ground. And you don't know, but who is doing this? But today I'm telling you that God Almighty is going to expose them. They rely in secrecy. In mystery, they're shrouded in secrecy. But today, God is going to unveil them. God is going to expose their nakedness. And let me warn you, saints. Don't be shocked if it's your father or your mother or your siblings. Agents of darkness can be anyone in our family. Some of you think, oh, which is somebody afar? No. The most dangerous agents of darkness are our own family members. Yesterday you were here. I think yesterday or before yesterday for God to begin to deal with household wickedness. Isn't it? Were you not here? Deliver us from wicked relatives. But there are wicked relatives that you don't even know that they're wicked. During the day they smile, they grin, they give you gifts. They cook for you. They come and help you to clean your home. They pretend that they are for you. But at night, they are busy, busy astral projecting to your home. They are pinning you to your bed. They are arresting your finances. They are troubling your marriages. They are making your children rebel against you in your own home. They are making you sick. And you don't know because you think that, hey, these are my family members. You think that, listen. Even some of your neighbors, the people that live next door, that bake a pie every Christmas, that like to come for tea and like to come for a nice coffee and a nice little chit chat. Even those, be very careful. They could be the ones astral projecting to your home. Without you knowing, they are jealous that you have a family. They are jealous that your children are successful in education, are still in education, are not out there gang banging, and they don't want you to see you happy. And being that they are your neighbors, they know what kind of car you drive, what kind of job you have. They can see you bringing all those those bags full of groceries and nice stuff, and you don't have the cheap stuff. It's the it's the best peanut butter. Is the best jelly, is the best jam, is the best loaves of bread, is the best everything. And you think that, hey, my neighbor likes me. And when they come to your home to have a cup of coffee, you give them a nice cookie. And when they taste in the cookie, they say, mm, these cookies are not those cookies that are from, from the brand of the supermarket. This, this is a nice cookie that is organic and whatever it is that you've got going on. And they are not happy. And they go to their to they little demonic rooms at night and begin to wear their cloak and pray against your finances and begin to send incantations for you to go down financially and begin to pray some demonic prayers and read some book of spells for your husband to begin to hate you for your children to rebel against you for you all to begin to be sick and you don't know that the source of your sorrow and pain and affliction is your next door neighbor we're gonna ask God that knows the secret of all things to reveal it to you. We are not here to ask a man. 
You are here to ask the Almighty, the creator of all things, the one who has the whole world in his hands and knows who is who. Is to the source. You're going to go to the source of everything that has ever been created, is being created or will be created. The source of everything will reveal it to you. If you care to ask, he will answer. He says, knock and it shall be open. Ah, ask and it shall be given unto you. Somebody says, I ask for divine protection. The protection from what? Even to ask for protection, you need divine revelation. When you get up in the morning and you are moving in the prophetic, God is going to show that, look, there is an arrow of accident today. And, and there's such and such um, freeway. And God will tell you, don't go through that freeway. Don't go through that route. Change your route. And you will pray for divine protection, knowing where is the arrow. And you tell that arrow to return to send. And you will name it. Arrow of accident targeted against me that I saw you coming in the dream because my God revealed it to you. Return to sender because my God has already revealed. I cancel you and I return you back to sender. Go and land back on the head of the person who sent you to target me for accident. Return to sender. By fire and by force in Jesus' mighty name. That is what you ought to pray. But some of you, you're just asking for protection. Listen, the reason why you come to the live stream every day is that every day you are growing in Christ. Last year you were praying for protection. How about asking God to give you divine revelation of what exactly, how you should pray for your protection. Come on now, because if you are not growing in Christ, you, 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 every day you, you, you're clueless of what the enemy is doing. No divine revelation in your dreams. No divine God. You cannot audibly hear the, the voice of God. You, what, what, what good are you? Some of you here, the devil is preparing an hour of death to your best friend. And because you don't have divine revelation, you don't pray for it. Well, you say, God protect my friend. God wants you to rise higher than that. God wants you to know what it is that you are praying. Come on now, saints. You cannot come here every day and nothing is happening in your life. You are not tapping into the prophetic. You are not connecting to God. You Listen, if you last year could not hear the word of the audibly, God, this year you need to be doing it. Because listen, the wicked people are getting more wicked. The demonic people are getting more powers from the demonic altars from Satan himself. What are you, how are you empowering yourself spiritually? How? You just pray those old little Mickey Mouse prayers. It, we won't listen. It worked 20, 2021. It, wor it worked during the, the affliction that we were having that time. But now you're going to have to step higher than that. You are, you know, like you have that um, phrase or saying this. Climb the corporate ladder. Do you know that we Christians have a ladder? Ask Jacob when he gets to heaven. You cannot be on the same degree. Uh, you, you, you are in, still in that first step like a toddler. While others are already about to reach the top of the ladder. Carry on. The witches and wizards and warlocks this, this month are offering blood sacrifice of animals and human beings. And you are there in your room with your little pyjama praying that God protect my friends and my mother. Oh, hallelujah. And you go to sleep. You are the next victim. Because number one, you, you don't even know what you're praying. You just, you just pray. When Paul was about to go in his mission... To leave Jerusalem, he said, he said, I don't know what expects. I know what expects me when I get there. More beatings, more punishments, more persecution. But I'm going anyway. Because why? God had already, already given him revelation that, look, don't be surprised because more persecution is coming when you get there. They are waiting for you with whatever means to chastise you. They are ready for you. So when you get there and you get beaten again and they, they, you're thrown into some sort of dump and you are beaten and accused, don't, don't, don't go there unaware. Prepare yourself in prayer. And that is why Paul, every time they beat him and they thought that he was dead, the man was still alive because he prayed before. 
Lord, I know that they will beat me. I know that they're going to be using belts and whatever, not stones or whatever new things they're going to be using. But Father, Lord, don't let me die because I still have to. This gospel has to go travel the four corners of the world. It is not my time yet, Lord. G g hold on, Jesus. Help me, God. But you are going to work. You don't know that your, 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 your boss already prepared a, 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 a sucking letter for you. You're just, I pray for divine protection at my job. Meanwhile, your, your, your dismissal letter is there waiting for you at your desk. You see your, your life? And you are still praying for, for your little circumstance. Meanwhile, the agents of darkness in your city have summoned themselves this Halloween to sacrifice blood to their altars. If they were astral projecting last month, the month of, of September, this month they, they, they are not even astral projecting. They are appearing inside people's homes to strangle them and do God knows what else. Their powers are heightened and the climax is going to be on the 31st. But you are not in your prayer altar. You are not praying, oh, I'm tired. Who is not tired? You, you are tired more than who? Some of you don't even have a family to be tired. All you'd wash is one dish and one fork and one knife and one cup, but you are tired. Some of you don't even wash it. You have a machine. You have no babies. You have no children to... You know, children, are, are, even when they are teenagers, you still have to monitor them. Hey, what are you watching on that iPad? You have to go to their bag. What kind of mess is this in this bag? Who is writing you this? I'm here in my house. I'm like, I'm like the police of my house. And my husband is, is the superintendent. Yes, we are supervising everything. We supervise. We supervise. But you don't have such worries as us parents. Not to talk about grandparents. They're fed up of us that are adults now and they have to, to deal with our kids. Because sometimes we are having troubles and we are calling mom and dad that are in their 70s, in their 80s, and to, to, to speak to these people. They're misbehaving today, dad. They're misbehaving today. Oh, pass me the phone. Let me speak to him. Let me speak to her. Why are you doing this to your parents? Blah, blah, blah. Grandparents, no, it's not easy for them. Grandparents worse. And then now, you know, those who celebrate Christmas, God bless them. They are required to give large sums amount. Of, the kids are expecting do, all manner of stuff. Grand, a grandparent's job is never done because it's, the Bible says your children's children. So obviously when we are having difficulties as children at home with, our, with the children's children, who call them? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong. Bless the grandparents. But some of you don't even have those issues. You, all you do is go to school. Your mother is washing for you, is doing everything. But you cannot pray. You are constantly sick. Oh, oh I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so, <laughs> I've seen some, some, some households when they, oh, so and so pray, teenagers. I'm dying. I'm so tired. I'm dying, teenagers. Who has them? No, no. All they do is eat and sleep and, and play games, but they are tired. And they're hungry all the time. You don't have that kind of problem, but you are not brain enough. You are tired more than who? That God and the Holy Spirit is telling you midnight, some of you, two o'clock, you get up and it's always the same time. Some of you always get up the same time, 2.30 or 3 a.m. And God is saying, stay in prayer. There is an arrow that is targeting your finances. There is an arrow that is coming, that is aiming to, to seek to cause infirmity. There is an arrow of accident. And all you do is just you go under the sheets and you get your pillow and you go put it over your table and you go to sleep. And then in the morning when you are receiving a letter that you this and that and that, you begin to blame God. Oh, why Lord? Why me? Why not you? You were called to, 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 to get up like a soldier to be on duty and you slept on duty. So why are you complaining? Some of you come from families where every auntie in your family, including uncles, are witches and wizards and warlocks. And while you are busy watching your program, eating your popcorn, they are there 
praying against you. Pray that you die before the 31st. Pray that you are involved in an accident. Pray against your finances. Pray against your children. Pray against your marriage. And you, 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 and you are there comfortably watching your, your favorite series. Some of you even phone from work to tell your wife, have you recorded them? Have you pressed record? But now that we don't even need that because back in the days it was like that, the husband would call. Have you recorded my soap? Some of us that come from, you know, Latinos, we have the telenovelas, the Brazilian ones. Yes, in Portuguese. A telenovela that lasts a whole year. And it's, it's interesting every day. The wife, just try to call my mom when the telenovela is going on. She will insult you. Those days when she did not know God. Why are you calling me now? When is the telenovela? Yes. Some of you are like that. You have not graduated in the, in the, in the office of the Lord, in the school of the prophets. You are still want to watch all of them and then some of you even <laughs> i give up so saints i'm here to say that that you have to grow in christ that little prayer that you did in 2019 that hold you that was holding you a little bit more he cannot do it today you need to you need to go high in christ let us go to jeremiah 42 three saints Jeremiah 42, 3, that the Lord thy God may show us the way wherein we may walk and the thing that we may do. You see scripture back in scripture. He's saying that you need God to show you where, what path to take and what to do. Not only to show you that this is where you need to go, but what to do. Some of you here got married God did not show you that this is the way forward. So therefore, God cannot tell you what to do in that marriage. You never consulted God. Come on now. Some of you, your choice of career. Even your degree. Even your qualification. You never said, Lord, show me what way to walk and what, that, what should I do. Never consulted God. Some of you, if you look at the at the, 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 your life from when you were a child, never once you consulted God about what school to go, what course. You never asked God who to marry. You never asked God where to live. Nothing. And now that everything is upside down, everything now is destroyed. And as how my Caribbean say, my Caribbean friends and sisters say, now that everything is mash up. You want to involve God in your mess. You want to involve God in your tribulation. You want, no worse, you want to blame God. Don't blame God for that, your marriage that is failing because you never involved him from day one. God has no business in it. Don't involve God in that, your job, that you are now blaming him because things are happening at work. You never involved God when you were submitting your CV. Come on now, saints, let us be honest. How can you attain mercy before God if you're not honest? How is that going to happen? You never consulted God about your baby daddy and your baby mama. Now you are in, in the problems financially because you are holding that child. You are paying for everything and the other part has gone. And they live in their best life and you are left with those kids because you never involved God. You thought you were cute. You thought that your hair was luscious. You thought that you, you will have eyebrows forever. You thought that you will have nice and wispy eyelashes forever. Now that time is showing you some wrinkles, some gray hairs. You are not as cute as you were in 1983. Law of gravity is dealing with you. Now you want to repent. It's too late. Leave it for the young people. Tell the young people that look. I was cute one day in 1973, 1956. Give your testimony. 
I was so cute. I was the in thing in my town. If you ever ask for me, hey, people will tell you that was the, uh, I was a heartthrob. I was a sweetheart. I was the listen. And I mess. I, I, I mess with my future. I never consulted God. I never wanted to, to ask God for anything. But now I, I can see that I could have made better choices. I can see that I could have involved God. And my life would have been different. I'm here to say saints. Especially you the young people. Forget about us. We are too old. Going gray. And... Our knees hurt as well, especially when we get up in the morning. I'm talking about you that are still young and cute and pretty and have your destiny before you involve God. Say, Lord, I have finished my high school and I have graduated, but Lord, should I go to college or not? Is this what you want me to do? What is the course? Lord, guide me. Even if I have to miss this year because i don't know yet father lord show me guide me show me where i need to be and what I'm, i should be doing so that i will not end up like those old people like sister dalila that are now talking about this thing of messing their destiny and everything and crying and every listen include god in everything yes some people say it's never too late yes it's never too late, but there are things that you will never get back. Oh, yes. I'm being honest. I'm not here to lie. There are things that you have opportunities that are gone. Because why the devil knows. He, he bamboo, that's why he bamboozles young people with alcohol, fornication, and all these different things. Don't make the same mistakes. The reason why young people are in trouble is because nobody's telling them the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Don't mess your life. Yes. Make the best investment, which is to invest in God's vineyard. Invest your life in God's presence. Invest your time in God's presence. Because you don't want to be 70, 80, 40, 50. And you've messed your life. Yes, God can still re restore you. God can still do things for you. But there are things that God will not do. Because your time has passed. And you, you, you didn't have guidance. Some of you here ought to be thankful for preaching like this. Because your spiritual leader is not telling you. Be thankful because somebody is telling you the truth. Somebody's guiding you to God. Somebody's telling you that he is the answer of, for everything. What can you tell a man that has been an architect for 30 years and now they, they've retired and they understand that really truly they were an artist, an oil painter, somebody that should be doing portraits and everything. What can you tell a man like that? Their talent gone the devil did not want them to leave what god had spoken over them so we put them in a job a nine to five a job just to collect a check collect things but never fulfill purpose do you know that your gifts minister of god's glory some of you the gifts that you have you can use that gift and people will come to christ how many wonderful singers used their gift to sing for Satan, sing for the world? Had they used that talent to praise God, to, to release album, gospel albums, me, multitudes would have given their lives to Christ. And the devil knows. He's not stupid. The devil's speciality is what? Take people's glory the, and destiny. Some of you, you traded your destiny and your glory for a nine to five, for a paycheck. But you know well and good that that is not your passion. Your passion, you know, when you know your passion on the weekend and you are drawing and you are painting and you're doing whatever and you are happy. But then when Sunday comes and you feel, feel sad and you feel, wow, I have to go back to that dungeon, to that place. You're not living, you are existing. 
Some of you rushed into decisions, get married and all these different things. And now you see that I rushed. What was I rushing? Invite God. The Bible tells you, serve God while you are young. Unfortunately, we believers, we think that prayers, fasting is for old people. Church attendance is for old people, like those that are about to die. That is what the devil brainwashes people to believe. You need Jesus now that you are young so that you will guide you. You will not make mistakes. You will not marry the wrong person. You will you not choose the wrong career and be miserable for the rest of your life. So that your gifts can make room for you. Because only God knows your gift. And only he can reveal it to you. Follow me again, saints. Daniel 2.22 Daniel 2.22 He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. Come on now. I said and I said it again. Some of you, your, your worst enemy, the person that is sending these arrows, the person that has taken your picture to warlocks, the person that is going to clairvoyance, consulting powers about you, is your own mother and father, your sibling, your best friend. And only God can reveal deep and hidden things. Bring this scripture to God. He reveals deep and hidden things. You want to know deep and hidden things. Ask God. He knows what is in darkness. Again, I say the occult. These wicked people are cowards. They operate in darkness. They will smile. Listen, some people think that witches, wizards, and warlocks are unfriendly people. People who smell bad. People who, who are not very well spoken are toothless. Look. The agents of darkness know that they have to be good actors. They are the most friendly, the friendliest people you could ever meet. They are the nicest people you could ever meet. They smell good. They have the best outfit, the best designer wear. They have the best cars. They are nice. They give money because everything they give is poisonous. Try to take money from an agent of darkness and all your finances will collapse. You that like to collect money from your rich auntie. You that like to collect money from your rich uncle. You don't know what altar they get their money from. Once you take that money and you spend, that's it. That altar comes at night and takes your glory and takes your finances and takes everything that God has already spoken over you. Come on now. Be very careful those rich uncles and aunties that like to send checks. Or like to deposit money in your account every Christmas. There is a Christmas ritual that I need to make you aware. That ri these rich aunties, rich uncles do. They will send, oh I'm sending all the, the cousins, I'm sending all the nephews and nieces uh, $200 each. And you hey, begin to rejoice. And hey, make plans with that money because it comes every Christmas. It's a Christmas ritual. That money that they're giving to you is petty change for what they're about to collect from you. They're about to collect your glory. They're about to collect the star of your success, the star of whatever it is that God has spoken over you. And that money is a point of contact. The Bible says here, he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness. You don't know. Only God knows. There was a wicked uncle that was giving away this Christmas money. And a sister said to uh, the other sister, let him send the money. And this uncle made sure he would not deposit in the account. He would send it with a Christmas envelope. And that sister says, beloved, this is the source of your affliction. Is this Christmas money and these gifts. It's coming directly from the altar, has been consecrated. That's why he makes sure to send this money as paper money 
and, and is handed over in an envelope with a Christmas card. And the sister enlightened the other sister. Next time you get this $200 or to whatever money, burn it. Don't care about how much is it. Burn and see what happens. And the sister burned the money. Got a nice tray and burned the, the $200. Burned the money. And as soon the next day, that, that, that uncle began to have problems and this and that and that. And, and he was like a, a lunatic. You see what divine revelation does? That is the power of revelation from God. God is using me like how he used that sister to tell the other sister, burn the money and watch the altars being set ablaze and watch what will happen. I'm going to tell you a personal story. I once had a family member that gave me money because I was going on holidays. And they gave me some money and they put it in an envelope. Oh, this is, have a nice holiday. I was going to visit my mom. And I told my mom because I was excited. Oh, so-and-so gave me some money for, for the trip. My mom says, take that money and give it as a seed to your church. Make sure you don't keep any. And I did so. I went to church because I was traveling on a Monday. I went to church that time. I was a, it was a Sunday. I went and I gave the money for offering. And it was a lot. It was not petty change. It was a lot. So I gave the money and then that auntie, she contacted me the next week. She, she, as she said to me, why did you give the money that I gave you to your church? I'm telling you, I kid you not. This happened. Why did you give the money I gave for you for the holiday to your church? I says, and who told you so? She says, I know. And that was it. They know because that was an evil consecration to take my star to take everything that God had given me. And those days I was not as a strong Christian now. My mom was still praying that I will just take my mantle of responsibility. But my mom was praying and she had divine revelation. God showed her that look, the arrow. So these people that are giving you these things, they know. Because... That money, I'm going to be honest, that money that they give you, if you could see in the spirit, is demons attached to, demons of poverty, demons of death, demons of affliction. And what happens is that these people, these agents of darkness, they will send an arrow of affliction first to make sure that you are in financial distress. And they will just contact you after they receive a report from the demons that look, the arrow prospered. She's now in arrears with rent, now in, in debt, whatever it is. Then they, they call you. Ah, how are you? And you, silly you, will begin to confide. Oh, ah, don't worry. Give me your bank account details. Give me your bank account as a benefactor. And you think, hey, my destiny helper, that auntie, God bless her, she loves me so much. As the minute they send the money to your account, that's an agreement. And you go and take that money and pay your rent. That's it. A transaction has happened in a spiritual realm. They have collected your star, your greatness. They have collected everything. And only God can help you, saints. Only God can help you. Be very careful, those people who call you. Is everything all right? Oh, I remember you told me that you had a court case. I remember you told me that you had a, How is the situation? They're sounding to see if the arrow has hit you as a target. And you are in. That's why when you begin to say, oh, you know, all is well, nothing, you know. I never heard from them again. They say, okay, bye-bye. And they go. Be very careful. And the devil is not going to use somebody that you don't know, saints. 
That doesn't make any sense. Why would the devil use somebody that you don't trust, you don't know, is not in your f family circle or your friendship, friendship circle? That is not going to be efficient. Okay? So I'm here to say, saints, that the, the, the devil is going to use those people around you. He's going to use family members. He's going to use friends. So you cannot operate in even you that have. Listen, I'm going to tell you something that happened to me. I'm going to give you my testimony. And this sister, if she's here, let her hear. I don't care. There is a sister that gave me some money. All right. You know, people give me to keep me in ministry, right? You yourself there are here. You are helping me to, to keep me going. A sister gave me a donation. And I went to bed because I pray for all of you that support me. Even those who don't support me. I pray for you every day. The sister gave me some money. And I had a dream. That God said. This. God said. God in the dream. Show me that the sister was deposit the money that she was depositing in my account was from the marine kingdom he says that sister is not fully a christian she still attached to the marine kingdom and she's using that money she used some of that money to sow into your ministry. That's why you are now having dreams with mermaids. That's why you are now having dreams with the marine kingdom. And I had a dream that I was inside of a, a raging sea underneath. And I was rebuking those powers. And I was rebuking and I was praying. And I said, God, make it a way that they don't put this money. I didn't because you, I, I don't know the source. But God revealed it to me. And since then I've been praying. So this happened to me. Sometimes when I come out of the live stream. Because we, you know we pray right? We pray every day. What happened is that. Sometimes when I come off the live stream. I go to bed. I see witches surrounding me. You pray this and. We we afflicting this person. It happened to me last night. I came off the live stream. I went to have because yesterday I wasn't feeling too well. So I went straight. I went upstairs, did something, and I went to sleep. As I went to sleep, I had a dream with two witches challenging me. Why are you praying this? And and it, 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 it this witch was connected to people on this live stream. And the prayers that we prayed here located them. Located them. So I'm here to say, saints, that you have to walk. Some people think that the gift of prophecy is only for prophets. It's a gift that you have asked God. Give me divine revelation. Lord, show me why all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm in this difficulty. I never used to struggle like this. Is this struggle a testing time, Lord? Or is this struggle, of, is it from the kingdom of darkness? And who is doing it? And watch God. Because if you are sincerely asking God and you have faith, will he not reveal it to you? The Bible says in the book of Daniel 2.22, he reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. God will not, will not allow you to move in ignorance if you are his child. But he doesn't. The Lord has delight that we walk in the prophetic, that we walk in divine revelation, that we know what it is that we are dealing with. Let me give you another example in the Bible. When Jesus Christ of Nazareth was dealing with the demoniac, was casting the demons out of the demoniac. Jesus asked, who are you? To diligent, did he not? Because he knew that for me to cast these demons, I need to know their names. Some of you binding and casting, you don't even know exactly what. Returning to sender, you don't even know what. Make that make sense. 
If even Jesus said, said, look, I need to identify what I'm dealing with here. Then after identify, I cast out. Saints, don't mind the bell. All right? And noise. It's life. There is somebody outside. My husband will open the door. Don't worry yourselves. Don't get sidetracked. But I'm here to say to you, saints, you have to know what powers you are dealing with. You need to know who you're dealing with. If you don't know, you are not going to be able to do anything. You need to know who you're dealing with. So I'm here to say, saints, that you need to have divine revelation of who is who. Say, Lord, I notice that this month we are struggling. We were doing okay. What is wrong, God? Is it something I'm doing wrong? Is it somebody attacking me? Is it, what is going on? You are a child of God. You have all the right to know. God does not want us to be ignorant. The Bible says don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. Does the, not the Bible say that don't be ignorant. Ignorance kills. How many people die because they don't know they're not supposed to eat certain things. They're not supposed to do certain things. And they die genuinely because of ignorance. You need to know what exactly is afflicting you. Is it that, the, is it a, a, because sometimes saints, the trials come because God is testing us. Some, but sometimes it's because you are going through a season of trusting in God. You are going through a season where God is shifting you. Sometimes before God gives you something, he has to take. You have been praying for Lord, fix my finances and God, all of a sudden you lose your job. What you don't know is that God is orchestrating so that you will apply for a better one. To have a better salary so your standards of living can, can, can be better. But we cannot assume. We have to go and ask God. He is your creator. He is the source of everything in you. He is the source of your very existence. And he wants to fellowship with you. He wants to tell you the hidden about the hidden things. He wants to speak to you. Are you not his child? Follow me to Psalm 25, 14. Psalm 25, 14, and it reads, The Lord confides in those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to them. Isn't this the answer now? Look at the answer here in Psalm 25, 14. That the Lord your God confides in those who fear him. Do you fear God? Is God your father in heaven? Is he your all? Is it the reason why you are standing? Is, are you living just for him? He is, is he your everything? Then the Bible says here that the Lord confides in you. And if it's not confiding, something is wrong. Something is out of place. He makes his covenant known to them. Meaning what? When God is doing something, you are supposed to be privy. When God is about to shift you to a different location, when God is about to do something in your life, he will confide in you and he will let you know. Let me give you an example. If you're, those of you that um, are, um, are parents, if you are going to relocate to another city, that means that your children are going to have to enroll in a new school. They are going to have to, you know, say bye-bye to their friends and they go into a new life. Start afresh. You being a responsible parent, you will sit there now and say, look, mom or dad had a better job um, a proposition somewhere else. And that will that we will have to relocate in three months because... We're going to have to go to another country or another state, whatever the case may be. But you're going to sit your children down and you're going to let them know. You're going to inform them. Right? You're going to prepare them for what is to come. You are not just going to plan a, and all of a sudden your, your children only see the, 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 the moving track. 
and 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 suitcases and everything and it's a, it will be a shock and psychologically that can damage a person especially moving to another country or to another state where they don't know anyone school is new no friends start afresh so that is us human beings what about god almighty does not he want he wants to confide in those who fear him the Bible says, Psalm 25, 14, God is not going to do anything without telling you. If you don't know, it's because you're not seeking him. If you don't know, it's because you're not honoring the covenant that he has with you by being in spirit of prayer, by being in his presence, by always constantly praying. Some people say, I don't know what is my purpose in life. I don't know why was I created. You don't know because you're simply not spending enough time in prayer. If you were praying one, two hours, crying unto God, God, I want to know the source of my existence. I want to know what is my destiny. Show me, Lord, the hidden secrets of my life. Show me what are your plans for me god is always faithful he always does but sometimes we don't want to accept it yes we don't want to there are some people for example that god has separated for service to him like myself everything from when i was a child has been preparation for me to take the mantle of service to god okay so i'm here to say saints that everything even listen but the the mantle of service to god is the most painful one because normally the people that god is trying to call majority of them like myself we don't want the responsibility we want to be like other people i always knew that i was not like other people I was just trying to force myself to do things, but I knew that that is not me. That's why I would pick this up and it would never work. Pick that up and it will never work. Pick that, try to do this and it will never work because that is not what I've been called. And when God calls you, you can run, but you will not hide. Remember Jonah. He tried, he surely tried, but he was swallowed by a whale and spat where God wanted him to minister. So some of you, is, you think that, oh, mm -mm, this is not for me. When God is saying, this is for you. This is what you were created to be. But some of us, like Sister Dalila, I wanted to be cute. I wanted to do the things that other people were doing. I wanted to be like them. I remember when I was a teenager, I was I think, 13, 12, 13. I was crying to my mom. Why well, cannot not be like other people? Everything is working for them. And they have things. And then my mom says, this, this, my mom, dad said, look, you are you and they are they. I'm not going to be stealing for you to have what they have. I'm not going to kill myself to give you what they have because I don't know where their parents got it from. Satisfied with what you have. Trust in the Lord and he will order your steps. And I just look at my mom thinking, this woman is making me even more angrier than instead of her, I, I want to be trendy like others. I want to have their hairstyle. I want to have what they have. And it seems like everything was always conspiring for me not to be trendy. Conspiring for me not to do the, what, whatever it is. It's like God himself would just whip me and, and, and take his holy belt and chastise me. Nothing was working. Oh, yes, others were, were cute and, and popular. And I, I wasn't popular like them. I was because God had called me and I, he, he, he wanted to show me that, look, I will slap you until you, you assume your, your, your position. Yes. So some of you, you already got, you already, all God is, is telling you what is your mantle of responsibility. Number one mantle of responsibility before anything is what? What were you create? You that don't know why, why you were created. You were created to worship God. And God reveals himself to you during worship. When you surrender to him, he, will, he reveals himself. Come on now. Somebody says, my dad made us wear a long skirt to school every day. I was my... Listen, we used to have that long skirt. And you know what we used to do? Fold it on top and then put the school cardigan on top and fold it. And then when we see somebody that looks like they know mom and, you know, know us, we then we, we, we hide it with our book, with our books or bookcase, we hide. Oh, yes. So you listen. 
All these different things. Trying to run from God. Oh yes. So I'm here to say saints. That all this kind of stuff. We've done it. At least you were good enough to keep the skirt until school. We never listen. Keep what? So people. Uh, we wanted to be nice and trendy and popular. So we can't go to school in that kind of skirt. No sir. Mm -mm. So we find ways. And like, oh, mom, so-and-so is having a, uh, we're going to study with so-and-so. All lies. We're not studying. We've gone somewhere to, 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 you know, to do things that were not good. So I'm here to say, saints, that God says that we were created to worship him. You don't know what is your purpose in life. Do the first thing that we all ought to do. Be in his presence. You want to know what you were created? Already the, 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 the Bible provides the answer to it. You were created to worship him. You were created to serve him. Do that and the rest will follow. All right? Once you position yourself to be obedient to God, then what happens? God begins to reveal things to you. Begins to show you your purpose. He begins to show you what is your mandate. Why were you created in the first place? It, will, it, it does. And, and, and if you ask God to guide you and order your steps. He will place you in certain environments. He will place you in certain places where your destiny helpers are already there waiting for you. But you have to ask him first. And always pray. Say, Lord, everyone in my life that has not been sent by you, planted by you to be in my life, anyone in my life that is not my destiny helper and is not connected to my assignment, uproot them, Lord God. Sever them, sever the relationship, even if it hurts me. Uproot it, Jehovah, in Jesus' mighty name. And watch people block you after that prayer. Watch people not being as friendly. Not sending you any more te text messages, not inviting you, not including you anymore. It means that God has heard your prayer. You that are parents, pray for your children. Everyone in my child's life that is not a destiny helper, that is not adding value, that is not ushering them to their assignment. Lord, I curse the friendship. I sever that friendship in the spirit uh, with the mantle of the parental mantle. And, and, and the anointing of a mother and the anointing of a father, I sever the relationship. I destroy it. I curse it to death. You that have children that are addicted to substances, pray. Father, Lord, whatever drug dealer that is, that is, fund, that is giving these things to my child. Father, Lord, I curse the, the source of income. I curse the source of, that they're using to, 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 to give my child these things. I curse the source. There will be no supply. I curse the supply. I sever the supply with the sword of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. And watch. All the drug dealers, all the people who supply that they're going to go into coma. Some are going to be apprehended by the police. And your child will be isolated from left and right and center. And they will understand that, hey, it is morning time. I better go back to my house. I, I, I better do something useful with my life because this wicked way is not prospering for me. It is what it is. You notice that your husband has some friendships that are demonic. Curse the friendship. Say, Lord, I uproot this friendship. You have to pray. Use your mantle of prayer and responsibility. Say, whatever it is that is allowing my child to do this and do that, Lord, I curse the supply. I curse the source. I uproot every evil friendship. I curse the friendship. You will see that all of a sudden they will have a, a fight with that evil best friend, a fight with that no good people, that they, that the crowds that they fall. All of a sudden they will just scatter. But you have to pray. Ephesians 1 17 saints last scripture and I promise you I'll leave you alone Ephesians 1 17 I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation 
so that you may know him better. Come on now. Paul the Apostle here is praying, asking God Almighty and the Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father in heaven, to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. How many stupid things have we done because we didn't have the spirit of wisdom? How many stupid things we did because we didn't have the spirit of revelation in us? Therefore, we did not know God better. We did not know God's power. We didn't know God's capabilities and sovereignty over our lives. And we did things that even today we sit down and think, wow, is there anyone more stupid than me? More silly, more stupid, more idiot. Yes, I'm being honest. I'm sorry to use such words, but it's the truth. The Apostle Paul here is praying for the saints, asking the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, to give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that they will be able to know him better. But you are not praying for revelation, not praying for wisdom. Do you know that some situations in our lives are not even spiritual, it's wisdom. You don't have the wisdom. And you don't know where to get wisdom. That is why when you ask for wisdom, God will place you in certain spaces where you, okay, when you are asking for wisdom, don't be shocked if you are befriended by an elderly person. I'm, I'm being honest. Wisdom comes in many forms, but... Either you will be befriended by a person that is elderly and elder in church and you, they will begin to mentor you, give you advice, tell you don't do this, don't do that. Or you will, you will bump into a book, out, three steps to get out of debt and you will read that book and because of the wisdom of God, you will begin to apply those principles, those economical principles to your life. And you will, all of a sudden, you've paid the debt. Right there, wisdom and divine revelation from God. Not everything is the devil. Some things is lack of wisdom. You lack wisdom. You lack revelation. So therefore, you cannot come, come out of certain situations because you don't know better. How many people are in the situation? Look, look, you see generational poverty. I'm going to be honest, saints. It's lack of education in most cases. There are situations that is demonic because of altars, because of pacts with the enemy. But there are also situations where the devil keeps a certain family away from education. Mom did not finish high school did not graduate from high school, could not go to college, could not do this, could not do that. Now the children as well have mom as a model. They think, oh, if mom did not go to college, I don't need to go to college. If dad has not finished high school and he doesn't have a diploma, then I don't need. So therefore the devil is perpetrating generational poverty and ignorance in their family by stopping them from getting education. That is why there are some altars in certain families when a child is trying to excel academically. Either they get sick on the day of the exam, either something happens or they begin to rebel and smoke and everything. And the teachers will come and speak to mom and dad. Oh, but he's so bright. She's so intelligent. They could do, some, they, they could do much better. And that child is just being delayed, delayed. Delay and a child that comes from a different background, not as bright, not as intelligent, but by mom and dad are Christians, mom and dad have education, mom and dad have the wisdom of God, that child will excel. Meanwhile, a prodigy child will be taking drugs and doing all manner of stuff, not getting educated. You see the wisdom of God. Some of you here need to be taking your life serious because your child is watching you. You think, ah, I don't need to go and take that course. Go and take that course to sh so show your son that, look, you know, education is the way forward. If they see you doing well and you say, son, I stayed in school. S daughter, I stayed in school and now we can afford this. Now we can. They're going to see sense. 
But you yourself at home, you, you are not reading any book, but you are forcing your child to read a, a book. I, 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 you think your child is, is a hypocrite like you? Oh, stay in school, son. Meanwhile, you, have, you did not stay in school. Don't smoke, son, but you are smoking. Don't run around and do bad things. You're always constantly getting yourself in trouble. For God's sake. Change. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for revelation. I once had my son saying to me, oh, mama, I can't do it. It's too difficult. I says to him, is there anything too difficult for God? Is there anything impossible? I said, son, one thing with God, do your best and pray and he will do the rest. Yes. I struggle with calculus at school, numeracy. And my mom always encouraged me, says Dalila, she used to say, and so what you failed at maths, that doesn't mean that is the end. Some people are good with numbers and some people are not. You have your little gift. Let that little gift work for you. It, whatever you, it, my mom says, invest on in what you know. Don't focus on the negativity. Don't focus on the maths. Don't focus. You, you cannot do it. Don't worry. What can you do? You are great with, 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 with other things. You, 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 you're great with other languages. You can learn other things. Focus on what you are good at. And, and that is what encouraged me and kept me going. She never said to me, you're stupid. You, you can't do this. You can't. No, she said, focus in that little gift that you have. Yes, you cannot do the numbers. Well, what about history? What about geography? What about sciences? What about the rest? Focus on that. Don't worry. Don't focus on the negativity. You can leave it. Try your best. And, she, and that's, and she, my mom never chastised me for my bad performance in maths. She kept encouraging me. She says, Dalila, there are other things that you are good at, that the others they are good in numbers are not good at. Everybody has a gift. She always, and I encourage my children. You don't know maths, but what about you write very well? You are very well spoken. Invest in that. Read more books. Focus on that. And let God do the rest. God is going to make a way. Keep pushing your children to go forward. Keep pushing yourself to go forward. Yes, well, mom and dad did not go to school. That is not your destiny. You are not your parents. You know Jesus now. Mom and dad were smoking. You are not your mom and dad. You are in Christ. Now you are a new creation. Stop thinking like that. Stop programming yourself to be like the people you left behind. Stop programming yourself to think that you can, you need to fail. You're going to fail like they fail. Look, it is a new day and ask God to give you wisdom and revelation. Ask God to, 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 to show you why is it that others can do it and I can't. Why is it that I keep trying and it doesn't work? Allow God to work in you. Allow God to do what he needs to do. God still has a project. Listen, if you are alive, and even if you're 97 or 98, there is still life in you. God is not done with you. There is still purpose. You are alive because there is still something that you need to do for God. And that's why you have not died. We are going to ask today for God to reveal what is the source of our problems and who and who and who? Because sometimes God will give you revelation in form of a course that you need to enroll or a book. But sometimes there is you are dealing in your bloodline with generational witchcraft. You have people in your family that have gone to the devil to be rich, to have money. And they are using the rest of the family as sacrifice to their altars. Some people, some family altars, they don't just kill the people like that. They, they, they use the people's stars and their glory. They take it and they use it in their altars. And then they only kill those pe people when they are old and completely frustrated. All right? So... I am here to say that some people hmm, are being frustrated by witches and wizards in their own family. 
The reason why you cannot prosper is that your prosperity and the prosperity of all your family members are at the altars of the witches and wizards and warlocks of your family that know deep secrets, dark secrets, demonic secrets that you need God to reveal it to you so that you can pray for, to destroy whatever it is that they are doing. Some of you here after this prayer, you are going to be the one liberating your entire family with the information that you got here from God. You are going to pray for God to reveal where is the altar, what has been done in the altar, who is serving the altar and who is doing what. Whatever situation it is, even if it's not witchcraft, if it's your own carelessness, if it's your own laziness, if it's your own procrastination, God is going to reveal it to you today. Some people, divine revelation comes and God says, this has not happened because you have the spirit of anger. You don't know how to talk to people. You need to learn how to communicate better. You need to know how to deal with your feelings. I don't know what is the deeper secret of your life. So whatever it is, ask God. You are not here to connect with Sister Dalila. You are here to have a connection with God. You are here to get answers to your problem. I am a person that I believe that the word of God has to make, has to be applicable to people's dilemmas, sufferings, and problems. The disciples were dealing with people's suffering, their infirmities, their idolatry, whatever it is. So God wants to be a part of your life. And everything, every aspect of your life. You have to be polite, Brother Jaha. Buy books. Okay? Not only buy books. Go out and socialize. Sometimes that comes by because of childhood trauma. Some of you need God to heal you from childhood trauma. All you saw was your dad being very aggressive. Your mom being very aggressive. And that is all you know. But God comes to heal as well. The Bible says God comes to heal and to restore. You don't have, and have to end up like your dad that was a drunkard, an alcoholic, a womanizer. That is not your destiny. If you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, he has given you the mantle of greatness. He makes all things new. Okay? I'm going to tell you of something that God had to heal me. And it was a problem. I come from a very poor country. That was always in some sort of civil war. And, and, and food supply was a problem in the 80s. It was bad in Mozambique. Google it, saints. It was under a communist regime. Dic 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 dictatorship, all these different things. We live in fear. There was scarcity. There was a lot of problems. And I had to accept that I have a problem. When I used to go to shops, instead of buying one bar of soap, I would buy three or four. Because why? That was part of the trauma as a child. Samora Michel, yes, you know what I'm talking about. So... When I used to go to a shop, I used to have, I used to see, for example, milk. I had to buy three cartons because why? I was programmed as a child for scarcity and lack. And in my subconscious mind, I thought, oh, the, the shops are going to run out. The supermarkets are going to run out. So I have to buy a lot. And I was, used to have a lot of tissue, in, uh, in napkins, and, and, and I had to ask God for healing. I said, Lord, heal me because this is not right. You know, this is, the, I, need, I need deliverance, you know. So all these things are childhood traumas. That these are things that you, it's not that you are a person that you don't love God. It's not that you are too difficult. You need, you need treatment. And only, only the Lord can give you that. It is not something that you can do. Some people say therapy. It's not therapy that is going to do it. 
You need to be at the feet of God and ask him, admit, confess, say, Lord, I have this problem. I also, because of the, 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 the circumstances of, of my childhood, I used to, for instance, be very fearful. Every noise because of civil war. We used to hear the, you know, it was so bad some, that the war was coming close to the main capital where I was living and we could hear the blasts of the war going on. And, and even now, if I, even if I hear fireworks, it's something that I don't like. God heal me. And I'm here to say, saints, that there are things that are traumas that we inherited from, a ch from when we were children. And now we have become the trauma. Now the trauma is how we, we identify ourselves. Do you know that sometimes you that have self-esteem, low self-esteem, it's because of the things that your parents used to say to you and the way they spoke to you and now you have become that that they spoke over your life it is a new day it is a new chapter of your life if you are in christ just say lord be honest with god i have a pro some of you struggle with rejection the spirit of rejection everywhere you go you don't feel that you should you have the the, the imposter syndrome Somebody's inviting you for a nice occasion, a nice event. You feel like, e -e -e, this is too much for me. This is not my type of environment. This, this, these are all things that will not allow you to become what God has created you to be. You need to ask God to heal you and to restore you. He created you. What the devil does, he creates these traumas early when we were, we were young so that we will we will be the agents of our own destruction we will stop ourselves from going forward we will we will not accept opportunities because we will be afraid of not being good enough you will see with people for instance that are now deformed with plastic surgery normally are the most beautiful people handsome men and they now disfigured themselves because why? Although they were very handsome and very beautiful, their parents were telling them, you are ugly. I don't like you. I don't know why I had you. You are this, you are that. So they grew up with an inferiority complex. Now they are hating themselves. They hate the way they look because the, the devil is jealous. He does not like, like what God has created. God saw that this child is incredibly talented, is beautiful, is handsome. And then God, the parents, used the parents to bully them, to say all manner of things, how ugly they are, demonic. And now they've disfigured themselves with surgery. That's why you that are parents, yeah, make sure you tell your children how valuable they are to God and how valuable they are to you, how you love them how you appreciate them, how talented they are. But that doesn't mean that you're going to create a spoiled brat. It's called affirming them of the value as children of God, as citizens of this world. Okay? Some of you, your trauma comes from bullying. You were bullied as a child by your peers. So now you have imposter syndrome. You are socially, socially awkward. You go to places and you instantly become to get a fear of people because of what happened when you were a child. The things that were said to you, the encounters that you had with your peers in the past. Don't let the devil hold you hostage to your trauma. Ask God to heal you. Let God heal you. Oh, yes. Let God heal you. Some of us that came from broken homes, single parent homes, ask for healing. You don't have to live in that trauma. It is not 1973. It is not 1980. It is 2000. 20, it's 2023. Let go and let God. Yes, it's true. So only God knows the source of the trauma. Only God knows the source of the problem, the genesis, where it all started. And only God knows who is doing what. Say, Lord, if it's witchcraft, tell me who is doing it. And deal with them. 
If it's trauma, heal me, Lord, so that I can move forward. If it's ignorance, enlighten me, Lord. Give me wisdom so that I will not operate in ignorance, but in wisdom. Bring it to God. Some of you, God opens the door of employment. You go for the interview, but you cannot speak. You cannot say God is not open doors. He opens, but you go there, you sabotage yourself. Number one, your outfit looks like you are a mad man or a mad woman. You have not ironed your clothes. You don't look good for the interview. You need God to help you. You need to have friends that will tell you the truth. What good is it that you come to the live stream and Sister Dalila only tells you what you want to hear and is not dealing with the problem? Nothing will change. Some of you that have anxiety attacks, your mother, when she was pregnant, she was under heavy stress. It is proven scientifically that mothers that are under stress, they pass the stress to their child. Ask God for healing. I says, Father, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, heal me from inherited, an inherited trauma from my mom. Some of you, your mother was not financially okay when she found out that she was pregnant. And then she went through financial difficulties, reject, rejection, abandonment. And that was passed on to you by the umbilical cord. Don't worry. God can still heal you today. That is why you are here. For God to fix you. For God to heal you. So saints, I have tried my best to preach. For God Almighty, to show you the mysteries of all your battles. For God to show you the genesis of all your problems and for God to fix you. Let us go into prayer. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you once again for another ministration. We thank you for your presence, Lord God, today. And we thank you for divine revelation and wisdom that comes with divine revelation. We thank you for this ministration, Lord God, that is open in our eyes to a new dimension of relationship with you, that we need intimacy with you. We need to be at your presence so that you can begin to reveal the source of our problems, the source of whatever it is that is afflicting us. Oh, Lord, our Father, reveal everything about our lives to us in Jesus' mighty name. Great revealer, show us our past and the root cause of all of our problems in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, show us as well our inner enemies in Jesus' mighty name. Enemies within be exposed in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, Abba, Father, concerning every situation in our lives, give us divine revelation about our marriages, businesses, ministries, finances, family, career, friends. In Jesus' mighty name, we receive uncommon revelation about our lives today in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, show us the pictures of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Lord Jesus, show us our foundation in Jesus' mighty name. Lord Jesus, reveal to us where things went wrong in our lives and why in Jesus' mighty name. Household wickedness, pretending to be our friends, be exposed, be exposed in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord, show us the kind of job you want us to do in the land of the living in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord, show us our divine calling in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord, show us uh, the, the partners that are supposed to be in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, Lord, reveal our talents to us in Jesus' mighty name. Enemies in the spiritual, be exposed in Jesus' mighty name. Enemies in the physical, be exposed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, show us our Goliath, stubborn and unrepented wickedness from our father's house, mother's house and in-law's house. Be exposed in Jesus' mighty name. Problems that come into our lives the day we were conceived, be exposed to us in Jesus' mighty name. Evil seeds, evil plantations that will kill us in the future, be exposed in Jesus' mighty name. Household wickedness hiding in our lives, be exposed in Jesus' mighty name. Oh Lord, remove spiritual cataracts from our eyes in Jesus' mighty name. Any powers blocking our vision of who God is in our lives, your time is up, die in Jesus' mighty name. 
morning. Secrets of our lives come upon our tabernacle in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, uncover our darkest secrets in Jesus' mighty name. Oh Lord, show us the secret lives of our partners in Jesus' mighty name. Every ancestral secret retarding our progress be revealed in Jesus' mighty name. Every secret we need to know to excel spiritually and financially be revealed in Jesus' mighty name. Every secret hidden in the marine kingdom affecting our lives be exposed and disgraced in Jesus' mighty name. Every secret we need to know about our finances, about the people around us, reveal it to us today in Jesus' mighty name. Every powers that wants our efforts to turn against us. We pull you down in Jesus' mighty name. Every secret we need to know about our fathers and mothers' lineages be revealed by fire in Jesus' mighty name. Every secret we need to know about our environment be revealed in the mighty name of Jesus. Secret people behind our challenges and bondages be exposed and disgraced in Jesus' mighty name. Every secret we need to know about our hometown be revealed in Jesus' mighty name. Every secret we need to know about the work we are doing at the moment, be revealed in Jesus' mighty name. Oh God, restore the structure of our lives and perfection in which you have ordained it in Jesus' mighty name. Blood of Jesus, secure our portion and destiny in Jesus' mighty name. Every secret agenda of the enemy assigned against our lives, scatter in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, walk through our family and scatter every witchcraft operation in Jesus' mighty name. Oh God, rebuild the damaged walls of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. We stand against every satanic attachment that may seek to confuse and manipulate any revelation we receive about ourselves from you today in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, reveal to us secrets that will move our life forward in Jesus' mighty name. We refuse to fall under the manipulation of the spirit of confusion in Jesus' mighty name. Let our divinely appointed helpers begin to locate us from now on in Jesus' mighty name. Oh Lord, give us divine wisdom to operate our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Father Lord, we thank you because you are powerful and mighty to deliver us, to give us wisdom, to give us discernment. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to teach and guide us in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, the master teacher, we thank you for your divine power and guidance in Jesus' mighty name. You can never fail, oh Lord. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, lead us and guide us in all ways in Jesus' mighty name. Oh Lord, direct the affairs of our home in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, direct the affairs of our lives and businesses and finances and our health in Jesus' mighty name. Lord Jesus, we want you to show us which way to follow in Jesus' mighty name. If we are not, if we are on the wrong path, Holy Spirit put us back on track in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, lead us in the spiritual in Jesus' mighty name. Anointing for supernatural direction fall upon us in Jesus' mighty name. With our business and career, we need divine intervention in Jesus' mighty name. So we surrender our lives to the control of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Friends and relatives, misleading us, depart from us in Jesus' mighty name. From now, we refuse to listen to the voice of man and and we shall always listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. From now, we refuse to rely on our own understanding. We shall listen to the voice of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' mighty name. Satanic and evil voices from the kingdom of darkness depart from our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Voice of God locate us always in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, empower us to always recognize your voice in all situations in Jesus' mighty name. The word and the voice of God shall not fail in our lives but shall bear fruits in Jesus' mighty name. O King of glory, plant your word in our lives always in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, guide us and direct us in knowing your mind concerning our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the signs and wonders and miracles. Thank you, Lord, for the open doors and divine revelation and redirection. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Somebody here, you are a person that you have been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. That is your recent diagnosis from the doctors. 
The Lord is speaking to you today and he's saying, stop eating sugar, things that are processed and you will never have that diabetes again. Sister Favor receive healing and the healing comes with a divine direction from God. Stop consuming sugar, carbs, things that are rich in sugar, processed things and, and have a, a, a light diet, a diet that is rich in vegetables, in minerals. You don't know how what to eat. Go to you go to YouTube. There are you know naturalists there, no not people that, that can give you a diet for people who suffer from diabetes. You need to educate yourself and you will be well. In fact, if you change your diet by the time you test, you will not have any diabetes in your body. That is that is God that is, 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 is doing things. Healing through wisdom. Somebody says dietitians. Don't worry about dietitians. They will be telling you to eat all manner of things that are not good like cereal. Go to naturopaths. Those who, who have studied the diet of the Bible. All right, people who go to the Bible and tell you this is what you should eat. There are such, such Christians. There are... They are dietitians, but they are not the dietitians of mainstream, you know, pharmacia people. No. People that have studied the Bible, they know what things are natural, what things are not good for you, what, you know, it, 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 it requires investment in time in learning. Okay. If you shift to a natural diet, you don't even have to worry about what you are eating. If you go, if you invest in a natural diet, some days raw fruits, raw vegetables, some day cooked raw fruits and veg, not too much red meat, red meat. Have, listen, you want a good steak, leave it for the weekend. And the rest of the week, you have light things like fish and, 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 and birds, you know. Go and learn it. Sister Dalila is not gonna go. Another way of conquering type two diabetes, fasting. Fasting, diabetes hates fasting. But when you, you open your fasting, don't go and drink soda and all these different things. That is the word of God for you today. You that had this diagnosis. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you did, you are doing and about to do. There is a person here you grew up with your grandmother in a very poor village. And your parents were working in the city and you were left at the care of your grandmother. She tried her best, but your, there are certain covenants that your grandmother established in that village to keep you bound in life. Yes, you, the reason why you were in the stagnancy that you are, you cannot move forward. Is the, the dedications to ancestors that were done by your grandmother that was raising you. She raised you until you were a teenager and then you went to leave, relocate with your parents. Write capital, write capital me. I'm going to tell you how to break those curses, how to go about it. But you need to write capital me. Come on now. Beloved sister, what you need to do is from now pray to break the demonic ancestral covenants your grandmother made on your behalf. Okay, say, Lord, I didn't know my grandmother was covenanting me, but I break it today upon this knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you can, go to that village with some anointing oil. Go to that same place where you used to grow up. Pour the Pour the olive oil. It says every libation, every sacrifice to the ancestors, it is now broken and cancelled forever, destroyed forever, cursed to death forever. Because this oil represents the blood of Jesus that has redeemed me from the curse. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. And you will be able to move forward and become that that God has created you to be. But you can pray in the meanwhile. Okay, you can pray in the meanwhile in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Master Jesus. Thank you for your healing. Thank you, Father Lord, for restoration. Thank you, Father Lord, for all that you did, you are doing and about to do. Thank you, Jesus. There is a person here. Your husband is having an affair and is using all his money to sustain this other family. And you are divided. You don't know whether you should ask for a divorce or endure that situation. You don't know what to do. But I can see that you are puzzled. And you don't know exactly how to move forward. You are confused. Listen. Beloved sister, confront your husband. Say to him, I know that you have another family. And you are spending every resource to sustain this family. I am not going to divorce you, but I am going to separate from you. Tell him. I cannot continue to be in covenant with you and you are not in covenant with me. Tell the husband. Tell, tell them in the face. Be honest. Be transparent. God is saying be transparent. Be honest. Let them know that you know. And tell them that you are not happy with this situation. You are not happy with what is going on. Okay, that you will not find another family for him. That you are not going to be a partaker of his sin. You've had enough. Tell them and let God do the rest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Is there anyone here that you've heard the word of God and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You have. If you have and they continue in that relationship, then you can relocate somewhere else and separate. I'm not saying divorce. Separate and allow God to do the rest and pray for the altar of polygamy to be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Fast to break the altars of polygamy in Jesus' mighty name. There's an altar of polygamy in your husband's family that is speaking against him, speaking against his marital um Mar his mantle of marital responsibility in the land of the living. Is there anyone here that wants to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior? Write me in the chat to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior because you are tired of suffering. You are tired of living a life that has no meaning. You heard of Jesus today and you want to give your life. Be waves. In the mighty name of Jesus, be waves. Virginia, heaven rejoices as Sister Angie has said in April and blessed be. You are welcome into the kingdom of Christ Jesus. And as you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, including Ashbury, you have passed from death, condemnation onto life. When you die, you will not go to hell to serve Satan and his demons to be afflicted in the lake of fire. But when you die, you will be in the presence of God because you are establishing a covenant here with his son, Jesus, including your own tree. Welcome, beloved. Now that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need a Bible. Get the Bible in your own language. If you are an English speaking person, get a King James Bible so that you will grow in Christ. You will know God. And what, he is, what is his perfect will for you, your obligations, your duties as a servant of Christ Jesus, and also your benefits, which are the blessings. Now that you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, that doesn't mean that you go about doing the horrible things that you have been doing. It means that you have to turn away from your wicked way to accept Jesus and to serve him and to obey him. And to do what he requires from you. Okay? So now. I am encouraging you to join a local congregation if you have one. So that you will grow in Christ. And so that you can be baptized. But if you want to grow in Christ. Sister Dalila is always here. I'm always here from Monday to Saturday. 1 p.m. UK hour to 2.30, but sometimes even longer. Today is 12 past 3 p.m., but I'm still here. 
ministering. So saints, may the good Lord continue to sustain. You can come, join the live stream. You, we, you are growing in Christ every day just by coming. God is revealing himself daily here to all of us, including me. Okay? Now, if you want to see what previous ministrations and perhaps you need more from God, you can subscribe to our um, YouTube account, okay? The YouTube page, um, the YouTube page is there to help you grow in Christ, okay? You've got the YouTube page. Subscribe by going to the bio here. Click and subscribe. Even if I'm not here, there are, there are so many ministrations there you can grow in Christ. You always have a lot of materials there. And every day I make sure I post the ministration so that you will grow in Christ. And also saints. If you would like to donate to this ministry, I, the information is also available on, on the bio here. You will see the PayPal fully up and running. If you want to give, give it with a kind heart because you want to help with the furtherance of the gospel. All right. We are not obliged. Okay. So saints, let us pray before you go. I'm not too sure if I'm going to be able to do the, the um, 8 p.m. ministration today. If you don't see me, it's because I'm not well. I've gone to get some rest. This has been a long ministration as well. Okay. Um, Father Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for the souls that have come today to... Have an encounter with you. I thank you for the salvation that has taken place, Father Lord, in this ministration. I thank you for the Holy Spirit summoning us today. Give us <clears throat> divine revelation. Give us wisdom so that we can continue to be in your presence. So that we will know all the secrets. Whatever it is that is working against us that we have no knowledge. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking you today that you will reveal to each one of us here today the source of our problem, the mystery of our foundation, who is for us and who is against us, so that we can pray with divine direction, revelation, O oh God, in order to be able to be victorious in Christ. As your children leave this live stream, I envelop each one of them. With the precious blood of your son, Yeshua, I'm asking you, almighty God, arise and fight for your children. Give them the victory, Lord God. Protect them, deliver them. Give them good health and prosperity and advancement, for Lord God, in all the areas of their lives, Lord God, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, I speak divine protection, health, advancement, success, Unmerited favor, divine connections and open doors onto Jolene Stewart, Jerry Stewart, Gail Ned, Lori Nobos Gray, Latosha Quentabam, Brenda Pizarro, Ravina Collins, OGC Wholesale, Georgina Simmons, Tyron Harris, Rekita Waller, parents Raymond Renova, family members Keisha Kelvin Cayley, Sister Beth, Sister Rose, Lashonda Brown, Julie Jeffries and Scotty. Emily Jackson, Lorian Baker, Ruth Lua, Father Lord, I speak unmerited favor, open doors, divine connections. I speak health and prosperity and advancement and success over, over Venice Epton, Simone Morgan, our products, Antoinette Lewis, Michelle Wallace, Abimbola Akano, Natasha Fogo. Roxy and Bell, Genoa Biherke, Asila Preston, and children Tristan Ryan, Angelette Newman, Augustine Ashiedo, Mama Hurley, Roberta Davis, Karen Adley Moss, Cecil Sobers, Nathalie Bish, Naily Natson, Kimberly West, Shara Ashford, and Sister Dolly, in Jesus' mighty name. 
Father Lord, I speak unmerited favor. I speak divine connections, open doors, success, mantle of greatness, of honor. I speak, Father Lord, health and advancement over Chris Lee with Chantel Small, Jessica Kincaid, Lakeisha Drama, Joanna Victorino, Elizabeth Escamilla, Mariam Freddy, Tropic Bay Boutique, Angie Newman, Felicia Toe, J.D. Simmons Bell, Denise Mitchell, Tas Flomo, Tamisha Brown, Titi Toure, Zikona Moloi, Gladys, Sive, Oweto, Kunsele, Kumu, Danielle Redmond, and Anissa Gale. In Jesus' mighty name, I equally speak unmerited favor, divine encounters, divine connections. I speak, Father Lord, open doors, unmerited favor, success, the mantle of greatness. I speak, Father Lord, wisdom. I speak divine direction from the Holy Spirit over Teresa Sullivan, Eric Campus, Andrew Apostolo from Value Stores. Rachel Reed, Mrs. Martin, Tamisha Hayes, Selena Radley, Kito Mila Cole, C. Michelle Johnson, Erin Jones, uh, Elma Clark, Elizabeth Tadis, Pasca Beatty. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Saints of God, may the good Lord bless you and keep you. May he continue to uplift you and show you the way forward and the hidden Mysteries about your life, your destiny. May he continue to empower you. May he continue to show you all your enemies and give you the anointing of the, 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 the King David, the anointing to kill and slay every Goliath that is threatening you, that is working against you in Jesus' mighty name. Saints, this has been a long and... You know, ministration. So I won't come back here later on. Okay? I think, you know, you. this has been wonderful. I'm going to have some rest, drink some water and some tea. So I can pick up the battle tomorrow. All right, saints. May the good Lord bless you and keep you. Go in peace, saints, and have a wonderful...